For the master did help the man to evil and to spread good cheer. Great you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on firing on. Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the fiery line. I will praise the Savior for the call we have. Keep on the fiery line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the past of sin. With the shout of welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the fiery line. You must fight. Be brave all evil never run nor even lag behind if you would God and the righteous keep on the fiery line oh you must fight be brave against all evil time we receive our tithes and offerings. Brother Buck, you pray over tithes and offerings, please. with Sister Donna McFadden and then Brother DeMers come around with the word. I'm still so thankful to be able to be in God's house to worship Him. You know, with all that we got going on in the world right now with the uh, the war in Israel and all, you know, if we let our minds dwell on that, it can really bring us down in one way. Even in another way, as Christians, we look at it as we know God's soon coming. But no matter what we face in this world, we always can remember and praise and thank him that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Powers of hell may come my way. 
greater is he in me. Greater, greater, greater is he in me. I'm singing, I'm shouting, I'm happy and I'm free. I'm a soldier in an army that never has known me free. Greater, greater, greater is he in me. Greater is he. For so long I wandered in this cold, cruel world alone. Heartbreak and much failure was all I'd ever known. Then I met God's only son who listened to my plea. Life has a brand new meaning. Greater is He in me. Greater, greater, greater is He in me. I'm singing, I'm shouting, I'm happy and I'm free. I'm a soldier in an army that never has known defeat. Greater. That's what the Bible teaches us. Young people are dismissed to go to their class. Amen. We hope that you are blessed today. It's good to see each of you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the revival we've just had. Amen. What a wonderful revival. If you missed it, you just missed it. I'm telling you. Amen. Tuesday night was really Tremendous, the Holy Spirit come by, but every night was great. Brother Dickey and Sister Charlotte Webb just did wonderful in both the bringing of the word and the singing and the anointing of God that was upon them and upon these services. So we are thankful for what God has done here in our midst. Again, I, I, I reiterate, we're thankful for the growth. We're thankful for the young people. Uh, that are coming in. We're thankful for each one of you that are here this morning. And I know that God is going to continue to bless the Leslie Church of God. We've got great things going on. We're working on raising funds to build a family life center. And I think that'll be also a great um, help in getting young people in. It may not be you know, the complete answer, but I think it's all right to throw a basketball around or have a volleyball game or have fun and enjoy. And uh, so we are wanting to encourage that, and your help there is appreciated. Anything you can do to contribute, I, I want to raise at least $50,000 before we start the project. And the reason for that, the Bible tells us to sit down and count the costs. We, uh, I'm not a novice. This isn't my first rodeo. We want to make sure that we have what's needed. God has provided for what you see around you. All of this has been paid for. All of the basement has been paid for. To God be all the glory. We don't owe a dime on it. Nothing came out. Yes, God is good. Nothing came out of the general funds. 
What, what it was was money that was raised, donated, and God be all the glory. So we have vision for our young people here, and we are looking forward to it. You know, you take care of the church, and you take care of the man of God. I'm not saying that for any reason except to what I'm going to say in a moment, but God will bless your church. And with that being said, I thank you that today the, the state office recommended that churches that are able... Uh, give their pastor a raise, and this year you did that for me. You gave me uh, a raise. You gave me uh, uh, more than what uh, I, I was receiving, and I am so thankful for that. With the cost of living, uh, it's just something that is necessary. We try to use that money wisely. I told my clerks, I said, I was just online last night ordering from Walmart, you know, the big tubs of peanut butter. Because they say the economy is about to fail. And I'm not some conspiratist or anything like that. But I like to keep a few things on back stock in case things go wrong. So we'll have some protein and peanut butter. And if any of you need help, we'll try to help you. But uh, we, uh, we want to do our best. So with that being said, thank you for the raise. I appreciate you thinking of your pastor. And you're always good to me. And uh, I'm believing God is going to continue to bless this church. We've seen a great, great move of God during this last week of revival. And uh, God's going to continue working there. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want to read from Acts chapter number 5 and starting at verse number 14. Acts chapter 5 and verse number 14. 14, when you find it, if you'd stand with me for the reading of the word and out of respect unto the Lord, I'm going to try not to hold you long, but again, we want to share with you a thought this morning that the Lord has given uh, to your pastor, and I believe it'll help you if you'll listen, let it adhere to your hearts, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Where would we be without that word alive in our lives? That word guides our every step. That word is not only our roadmap, it's the GPS of our day to lead us unto Christ and lead us in the way in which we should go. We thank you for your holy word. Let it be that lamp unto our feet, that light unto our path. Let us hide it within our heart that we might not sin against thee. And I pray, Lord God, that you'd hide me, your servant, Behind the cross, look beyond the faults that I have, see the need. Look beyond the faults of these people and see the need. And Lord God, that every life would be blessed and anointed of you. Every ear would be unstopped. Every eye would be opened. That that word would go forth and challenge us to live better lives, to serve you, and to walk in the ways of the Lord. If there be one here today that does not know you, draw them by your Holy Spirit that they might be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. Looking at Acts chapter number 5 and verse number 14, the Bible says, And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. They laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. You may be seated if you'd like. We read in this portion of Scripture, following Pentecost, following the anointing of God upon his apostles. And I, I really stress that because I must carry you back first to where Peter came from. This passage is telling us of Peter and how 
They brought sick folks into the streets, laid on their bed, laying on their couches, that maybe even the possibility of Peter's shadow casting upon them would raise them up and heal them just from his shadow. Amen. Now, you remember just prior to this, not long before this, Peter was found warming himself by the enemy's fire. And the Lord was headed to Calvary. They had just come out of Gethsemane, and, and uh, they were there, uh, and, and he was taken, as we know, and Peter being full of zeal but without knowledge. Can I stop there and tell you that's why you and I need more than zeal. Zeal is good. I love to see people on fire for God. I love to see people that are excited about God, but you need more than that. You need a deep walk and a deep relationship with the Master. Jesus had walked, or Peter had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. He found himself in Gethsemane. He couldn't even stay awake and pray for very long. The Lord found him sleeping and said, why sleepest thou? Come on, somebody. Hey, why, you can't even tarry one hour with me? Come on. Amen. He found him sleeping, but suddenly here they come to get Jesus in the garden, and Peter, he's the hero of the day. He whips or he thinks he is he whips out his sword and he cuts off the ear of the high priest servant amen and Jesus having mercy even upon those that came for him he healed that ear of that high priest servant amen Peter's got zeal and he said to the Lord in one place I'll never forsake you if you go to the cross I'll go with you I'll be there always for you Lord but it weren't long after his zeal amen what's soon ripe is soon rotten and Peter found himself cursing Christ and cursing and, and carrying on and saying I know not this man I have nothing to do with this man I'm not one of them but they said unto him thy speech betrayeth thee if we know who you are we know he said I tell you I am not and he, des he denied Christ the Bible says three times before the cock crew. Uh, amen. He warmed himself uh, by the enemy's fire. And this is just a short while prior to this that we're reading about here in this passage this morning. Why, preacher? Because something took place uh, at Pentecost. Uh, can you say amen? Uh, I said something took place uh, at Pentecost. There's a lot of people that feel like they don't need a Pentecost uh, today, but you need the Holy Ghost now more than you've ever needed him before. Can you say amen? Why preacher? Because we are in the last days. The signs of the times are everywhere. If we look about us, we see events taking place in our nation and other nations. Amen. That are written in this word that this word tells us will happen. And it's high time that we looked up for our redemption draweth nigh. But a lot of people People aren't looking up. They're looking down at the world and the things of the world because they've not been filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible teaches us that His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will lead us into all truth and all righteousness, all godliness, all holiness. The trouble is today, people are claiming to get saved, but they never get sanctified. And that's why they never receive the Holy Ghost. They hang on to their pet sins. They hang on to the things that they keep telling themselves are okay with God, but they're not okay with God. I don't care how many preachers tell you it's okay if the Word of God declares that it's not. And the trouble is today we've got a lot of ignorant Christians because the pulpits are desolate and barren. The pulpits don't have a man of God that will warn you 
you uh, not to go down that road. Uh, they warn you to take the straight and narrow path uh, which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. For broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction and many there be that go in thereat. Uh, so Peter finds himself uh, warming by the enemy's fire. But suddenly, uh, not long afterward, he's sorrowful uh, and he obeys what the voice of the Lord said. Uh, and he goes to that little upper room uh, and the Bible says that they were told of the Lord uh, to tarry there until. Uh, some of us tarry until we're done. Uh, but God said, I want you to tarry uh, until I'm done. Uh, until the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon you uh, from on high. For he prophesied and he told them in his word. Uh, he said, out of their bellies uh, shall flow rivers uh, of living water. Uh, and this he spake uh, of the Spirit. Uh, I want you to know Peter tarried until the power of God fell at Pentecost. Uh, and we know that thousands of souls uh, were saved there uh, because of it. Uh, I want you to know that Peter received that power from on high. And that power is still available to you and I today. Woo, hallelujah. I want to preach, if God will help me for a few moments, on how effective is your shadow. How effective is your shadow? A shadow is so effective, it's the only thing that doesn't cast a shadow. Think about that a minute. A shadow is the only thing that doesn't cast a shadow. However, there are a few things required to have an effective shadow. You know, a lot of people's shadows don't mean much. Peter's shadow meant something. Why? Because he had been with the Lord. Can I tell you, somebody will know if you've been with Jesus. Somebody will know by your talk. Somebody will know by your walk. Somebody will know how you live. I'm not talking from the teeth out. Lip service won't do it. You can tell everybody you're a Christian for forever. But from the teeth out will never work, brother. From the teeth out will never work, sister. Amen. You've got to live a holy, separated, sanctified life before God. You've got to be willing to be different. You've got to be willing to let God have his perfect work in your life. You can't just give him part of your life. You've got to give him all of your life. He either sets upon the throne room of your heart and he rules there or he doesn't rule at all. Can you say amen? So how effective is our shadow? Well, there's a few things required in order for us to have an effective shadow. The right position is required to have an effective shadow. Come on, somebody. Jesus said in John 8 and 12, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of of life. There is no shadow without the light. Can you say amen? I said there's no shadow without the light and Jesus is the light of the world. You're not going to find a shadow on a cloudy day. You're not going to find a shadow on a rainy day. You're not going to find a shadow when it's dark outside. But brother in the light of his love you'll find a shadow in the light of the goodness of of God you'll find a shadow and that shadow will be cast upon the loss that shadow will deal with the hearts of the wicked that shadow that you cast they will see the light of Jesus Christ shining through your life hallelujah I said hallelujah never fear a shadow it means a light is shining somewhere some people fear well preacher this is the shadow of death I read where the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Can you say amen? We don't have to fear the shadow of death. 
Amen. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, amen, the devil, if the worst thing he can do to you is take your life, worst thing he can do is send you to streets of gold, worst thing he can do is send you to a place where there's a crystal sea, amen, worst place he can send you is where there's a tree of life, worst place he can send you is where Jesus made a mansion for you and I, if the worst place he can do is send you to God's throne where you'll behold the Lamb of God, Hey, Satan, uh, you got no power at all. Uh, I said, you got no power at all. Yea, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Woo, hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about glorifying death. We've talked about that even some today. Some of you here with me. Halloween, what wickedness it is. If you haven't read that post I put on Facebook, you need to read the whole thing. We don't glorify ghosts and goblins and witches and warlocks and wizards. We don't glorify the dead. I see people on their Facebook page, they claim to be good Christians, and they're they're into skulls. Your God is not a God of the dead. He's a God of the living. If you've got a spirit... Well, you're glorifying the dead. You're on the wrong side of the fence, brother. You're on the wrong side of the fence, sister. Amen. You need to come over to the side of the living. God don't care. Hey, some of these motorcycle groups that are joining the churches. I'm not, I'm not for all that mess. I'm just going to tell you right off. Does that mean you can't drive a motorcycle and go to heaven? No, that's not what I'm saying. But when God cleans you up, you won't look like the world anymore. You won't have to wear the black leather and the cross upside down. You won't have to wear, amen, skull. And, and all these kinds of things. Nothing wrong with a motorcycle. I love them. Uh, but you won't look like somebody that just come out of Hell's Angels. Uh, come on. Uh, we got one of the brothers here that was a member of Hell's Angels. He's not here today. Uh, but I can tell you, he don't look like that anymore. Uh, he don't dress like that anymore. He don't act like that anymore. He's got a testimony uh, of how God brought him out from that mess. Uh, I want you to know when you get really born again... Uh, you won't glorify death and you won't glorify, amen, the world uh, that God has forbidden. Uh, God does not want us glorifying the things of death. He's a God of the living. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So the right position is required to have an effective shadow. We don't have to fear the shadow of death. We don't have to fear shadows in general because it means the light is somewhere shining through. That's what the shadow is all about. A man or a woman's shadow is the result of their position with regard to the sun. And I'm not talking the S-U-N here. I'm talking the S-O-N. Can you say amen? Uh, So your life position with the son of God it's length and character depending on where the individual stands in relationship to his shining rays how is your relationship with the son how is his light casting forth upon you and how is your shadow casting upon others little food for thought this morning so many lives depend upon what we do our temper matters I'm going to get to some of that in a minute but you stay with me we need to be careful if I've got one weakness it's sometimes patience I prayed Lord give me patience and give them to me now amen I said amen Lots of times we give, I I told somebody recently, I said I stayed on the phone with my cell camera people a while back. I won't mention their name. I'll be nice to them. I already left them a bad review. I don't like doing that. But when you stay on the phone for two solid hours and you get promised the world and nothing happens, somebody's got to make a statement. But I just got frustrated with them. I know I probably shouldn't tell on myself. You think I'm perfect. Well, I'm not. Every time you get them, they say, hello? 
I say, yo, it me. You know Paul Blot? Some of you didn't watch Mall Cop. I, I get frustrated sometimes. You always get, I don't mean that racist, but you always get somebody in a, what I'm saying is a far off country. They have no idea what's going on here. They're sitting on their couch playing with their children while they're talking on the phone. So I'm telling you this to tell you my downfall. Come on, somebody. I'm telling mine. You ought to tell yours. Uh, hey Amen. I, I have a problem sometimes with that. And God has to really keep me in line, especially when I've had a phone to my ear for over two hours and i got church people trying to call in and they're more important to me than this call. So I have to be very careful that my light shines and my shadow is effective. Now, you may know something in your life that causes your shadow not to be effective. But we have to have the sun shining through us. Am I right with the sun of righteousness? That needs to be our question. Am I right with the sun of righteousness? Being right with the sun is more than a five-minute prayer in the altar. Can somebody say amen? Being right means we are sorry for our sinfulness and we repent of that sin, which means to turn from it. And then we follow God's holy word for our life that he might reflect upon us and shine through us. People aren't getting through anymore. You've noticed it. I've noticed it. We all notice it. Used to be they'd come to the altar. No wonder the old saints of God used to gather around them and wouldn't let them up. Come on, somebody. We got them now that pray in the altars all the time, and they'll, they'll stay down there for an hour's time, and they don't ever get no help. You know why? Because they don't want to let go of their sin. You can, you can come here, you can snot, and you can cry, and you can whine, and you can stay down there, but you're not going to get through until you let go and you let God have control. Uh, come on, somebody. And when you let God have control, Jesus' light will be inside of you. His light will shine through you, and the shadow that the world sees uh, will be Christ inside of you. Uh, can somebody say amen? Uh, we need the light of Christ again can in our lives? Am I standing in the right position for people to see Jesus shining through me? Have you ever noticed while standing with the bright sunlight behind you and trying to take a picture on your cell phone that your shadow comes out in that picture? You know, you know what I'm talking about. You're standing there and the sun's right behind you, right? That shadows. You ever took a picture and watched the shadow? Somebody just took one recently of two people together, and both shadows were right there in the picture. I thought, why didn't they do that differently? Why, why did they do it that particular way? The shadow comes out in the picture. Likewise, if you were to turn completely around and face the sun head on, your shadow would no longer be effective. Are you hearing me? We cannot stand against Christ, but we must have him behind us backing our every move. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You, you, can't, you can't stand against God. You can't try to defy God. Peter said in Acts 11 and 17, what was I that I could withstand God? Can you say amen? Now, quit trying to tell Christ how it needs to be done in your life and let him shine down upon you. Let him shine through you, showing the world how it really needs to be done. Your position with the sun matters. Too many people are trying to tell God how to, well, I believe it like this. Well, bully for you. It doesn't matter what you believe. It matters, thus saith the Lord. 
I said, it matters, thus saith the Lord. Uh, you can't outdo this book. You can't rewind this book and change it. Uh, cursed is he that added to uh, or taketh away from the word of God. Uh, the Bible says that he will blot your name out of the book of life. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Where are you positioned with the sun? The right attire is required to have an effective shadow. And I see some of y'all squirming already because I said attire. How do you know I'm not talking about your car? I'm going to throw this in for nothing. I learned there's three tars down here. There's tar on your road. There's tars on your car. And you're tarred when you go to bed. Come on, y'all. You can laugh more than that. You make fun of my saying, ka. But our attire matters to have an effective shadow. The character of our attire has a major impact upon our shadow. We not only have to put on Christ or put Christ on, but we have to put him in. You understand him? When he's in, you'll have him on. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that ye may be an effective shadow. Put on the entire armor armor of God uh, your attire matters to God what you're putting on matters to God no 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 I'm not clothesline preaching don't run for the door amen and even if I was you ought to sit and take it uh, and learn what the word teaches us uh, amen we'd have more holiness churches if people got it right uh, some of them go too far and they got it all mixed up uh, amen and all they got is holy noses in the air and then you got others that go so low with a standard that they can do anything and everybody else can do anything. And they wonder why our young girls are ended up pregnant. Good preaching, Brother Demers. Thank you, Brother Demers. But I'm not here to preach on outward standards of clothing. I'm here to tell you your attire is made up of putting on Christ. Your attire is made up of putting in Christ. Have you ever seen the pictorial of a kitten with the sun shining behind him and his shadow being cast upon the wall makes it appear like he's a big, fierce, and mighty lion? You ever seen that? I have. That, that little kitten, he's walking along, but the light's behind him, and it's shining on the wall, and that shadow looks like a big, fierce lion walking about to approach amen although this little kitten may appear in himself to be of no threat to those that might prey upon him with the son the son in him and behind him his enemy becomes a defeated foe because of the shadow created by the attire of the son that he has put on amen brother and sister it's the same way with you and I if we will put on the whole armor of God if we will arm ourselves with Christ on the inside working on the outside I can promise you brother and sister that the enemy will be a defeated foe he cannot harm you the Bible says that you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy if you put the sun behind you your shadow will be a fake well preacher why isn't my witness effective well, maybe you're not living by the word, dummy. Sorry about that. You've got to live by the book. You got to walk in the light. 
Jesus is light. And he said, if you are part of that light, you'll no longer walk in darkness. You can't have the best of both worlds. There's no gray areas with God. God is not the author of confusion, which means that the enemy is. So you're either walking in the light and your shadow is reflected from that light or you're walking in darkness to which your shadow will never have an effect. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm almost done. You stay with me. We've got to put on the whole armor of God. We've got to put on Christ, the light, the sun. Our attitude can affect our altitude. So therefore, our attitude is considered part of our attire. I'm preaching to me here. Christians can alter their lives by altering their attitude at an altar of prayer. A little different spelling there, but you get the picture. We can alter our attitude if we'll alter our lives at an altar of prayer. A lot of people don't want to admit that their attitude is part of their attire. But your attire, spiritually speaking, is how others see you. Getting quiet in here now. Ladies, do they see you? Your witness, do they see you in a bikini? God, wipe that from my mind. I told him, I said, there's nothing worse than going to Myrtle Beach. Somebody said, go to North Myrtle. It's much better. All the old folks hang out there. Nothing worse than seeing a young girl in a bikini than seeing somebody 96 in a bikini. <laughs> so I try to go off season. Now I threw that in for nothing. But ladies, spiritually speaking, now don't, no mind going anywhere. Spiritually speaking, is, is your witness, is the world seeing you in a bikini or are they seeing you dressed modestly? Now I'm talking about your witness here, not your outward appearance. Your outward appearance may affect your witness, by the way, and I'll throw that in for nothing. But I want you to know that they're either seeing you clothed in the righteousness of God or they're seeing you naked. I don't know about you, but I want them to see Jesus in me. I want them to see the light of Christ shining through me. But it's quiet out here, in here isn't it? Uh, amen. Some of you think I'm preaching on going to the beach in your attire. Well, I'm not, but it used to be when men went out to, or girls went out to swim, they dressed like Mother Hubbard. Today, they've got a much bolder whim, and they look more like her cupboard. I'm almost done. Stay with me. The right temperature is also required. To have an effective shadow. Yeah, you may not realize that, but it's true. In Revelation 3, 15 and 16, the Lord said, Jesus speaking, he said to the church at Laodicea, we quote it often, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, he wants us either cold or hot, not lukewarm, not in between. So cold or hot's all we got to choose from. Now, both an iceberg and a fire exert influence. They do. They'll get your attention. But there's a major difference between their influence. The presence of the iceberg is known long before it is seen because it lowers the temperature of the water and the atmosphere. You know, some people don't even have to walk into a room to lower the temperature. It's just knowing that they're coming that can give you a chill. Oh, boy, preacher's being mean right here. No, no, you know those type of people. You heard they're coming. Oh, boy, there goes the they're going to bring it down. They're going to lower the temperature. Here it goes. Come on, somebody. 
An iceberg does that. It lowers the temperature, the atmosphere. It, it changes things. The Lord said, whether you are hot or cold, it didn't mean he wanted us to be cold. What he wants us to be is red hot and on fire for him. Can you say amen? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, that's why I like those fast gospel songs. Uh, somebody said, well, it's more than that, preacher. Yeah, but when you got the fire, you can't sit there singing, blessed uh, Sure. And I'm not against that. I love that song. Franny Crosby did a great job writing it. I'm not against that, but I got something a little more in me that wants to wants to sing for the Lord. Well, blessed assurance. Come on, somebody. Put a little life into that thing. He doesn't want us to be cold. He doesn't want us to be dead. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be on fire. And fire can also be felt from a distance. But it will be seen too. It's hard to ignore a brightly lit fire. The warmth from the fire will possess those around it. And it it's a brightly lit blaze that will be hard to ignore. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody's going to see that blaze. Uh, somebody's going to feel that warmth. I don't know about you, but on these cold nights that are coming, Sister Brenda loves these cold nights and these fall days. Me, I'm a little bit, I don't know, she's older than me, not a lot. I said that. You're supposed to, you can pay me a quarter later. Yeah, there you go. She, she, she's not really old, but she's older than me. And already when this cold hits my legs, I'm like, oh, ah, you know, I'm feeling that cold. Anybody else like that? Feeling that cold. But you know, there's something about when you get outside at night and you've got that fire pit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you light a nice fire in that fire pit, and you're up there next to that fire pit, and you're just warming yourself. Boy, that, boy, that feels good. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, that, woo, I like that. Ah, that's feeling nice. I, I like that warmth. I, come on, somebody. You know you do it too. You like the feel of that fire. It's warmth. It feels good. That warmth envelops your body. Come on, somebody. Well, it's that way uh, with our spiritual walk. Uh, even when that fire envelops us, uh, when that fire gets inside of us, uh, when that fire gets a hold of us, uh, it'll get a hold of somebody else too. Uh, it'll make our shadow uh, an effective shadow uh, that when cast upon somebody else, uh, they'll feel the blaze of its heat. As they come to the piano, are you cold as an iceberg or a blaze for God like a fire? Fire will make you witness for Jesus. Jeremiah tried to hide it. There's no hiding it. Songwriter said, I said I wouldn't tell a living soul. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about. It's what Jeremiah tried to do. Listen to what he said. Jeremiah 20 and 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. What was Jeremiah saying? He was saying I couldn't hide the fire. I couldn't hide the fire. He had the temperature just right. Will you stand with me this morning? God is looking for some rest hot Christians in our day who will reflect the love of Christ through their shadow sent forth from the light of Christ within them my question to you this morning is how effective is your shadow you see the Lord has called all of us to have an effective shadow because he didn't just say I am the light of the world and stop there. You've got to read a little bit further. This is what it actually says. He said, I am the light of the world. Ye all 
also are the lights of the world. Let your light therefore shine that men may see your good works and glorify the Father that's in heaven. That's what an effective shadow will do. Would you bow your heads and pray with me this morning, Father? We thank you for every life that is gathered here today. I pray that the message will not fall upon deaf ears. Make the ground fertile. Let us receive that word. Let that word grow inside of us. That our shadow would be an effective witness as it's cast upon others. And Lord God, others would find their way to you. That we could be that light in darkness to those that are lost. Help, I pray, Lamb of God. If there be one in the house this morning that needs Christ... Right now, you would pull at their heartstrings and you would change their life forever. In Jesus' name, amen. While every head is still bowed and every eye is still closed, I never want to be found guilty of not giving an altar call. If you're here this morning and you're away from Jesus, if you're here this morning and you don't have that blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. If you don't know that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, right now, you have the best opportunity of a lifetime. You have the opportunity that was given to the thief on the cross. He'd been wretched. All he'd done all his life was steal. And suddenly... There on the cross, he confesses to the Lord, and he found the steel of a lifetime. Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. You have that same opportunity today to come to the saving knowledge of the truth. Your soul might be saved, and you not be lost for eternity. If you're here God's dealing with your heart. Would you slip your hand up and right back down? Pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others here this morning? God wants to help you. Pray for me, preacher. I want to make it. I don't want to miss heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, you've seen all these that have raised their hand this morning pray, God, that you would help them and strengthen them. You would help their witness to be effective, their shadow to be effective. The light of Christ would shine through them. Lord God, if there's any that have not truly given their heart and life over to you, today they would do just that. Lord, that you would write their name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. If there are any that are lost, save them. If there's some, Lord, that have raised their hand that might just need your encouragement and your help, help them. Strengthen everyone, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you make a place to pray this morning before we leave God's house?
Amen. Thank you, and God bless each of you for coming today. I believe we can say surely it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. God's got great things. We want to see you back here tonight, 6 o'clock sharp. We also have midweek service at 7. Don't miss it. Come on out. Be faithful to God, and He will be faithful to you. Would you stand together with me as we dismiss you in a word of prayer? Amen, amen. Brother Mike Thomas, would you dismiss us, please?